of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in baptism, we begin a special relationship with Christ our Lord, who journeys alongside with each and every one of us. By the sprinkling of this water, may we be reminded of Christ's great love for each and every one of us. And so we pray. Blessed are you, Lord, all-powerful God. We ask that you bless this water, who in Christ, the living water of salvation, blessed and transform us. Grant that when we are sprinkled with this water or make use of it, we will, we will be refreshed inwardly by the power of the Holy Spirit and continue to walk in the new life we received at baptism. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, 
And it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact, we are the witnesses. Now, I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold when he said through all his prophets that his Christ would suffer. Now, you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully Sleep, for you alone, O Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of Saint John. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away. And not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love 
comes to perfection in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples told the story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great they, that they could not believe it, and they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, this is what I meant when I said, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, So you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that, in his name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may our risen Lord give you peace. The wounds on the body of our risen Lord served to prove his resurrection. But they could also raise questions as to why the glorious and powerful event of the resurrection of our Lord had not removed those wounds after fulfilling their purpose. Now surely the Lord had a larger picture in mind. Before we attempt to catch a glimpse of this larger picture, let us briefly consider what we know of. Now, the Lord meant to allay his disciples' doubt about his resurrection. In this state of doubt, when the Lord appeared to his disciples, the gospel says, they thought they were seeing a ghost. 
And then our Lord took them to task. And he asked them, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? He then showed them his wounds as a proof that he really was Jesus, their Lord. The wounds of our risen Lord may be seen to extend beyond the circle and time of these disciples, my dear friends. They are relevantly applicable to the wounds inflicted on the church today, the mystical body of Christ, from within and from without. And these wounds are the damages, the sins committed by members of the church, especially the leaders, as well as the injuries that persecutors of Christians inflict on the church. In other words, our sins killed our Lord, the author of life. This extended significance of the Lord's wounds is somewhat affirmed by the call for repentance in all our readings today. For repentance is needed where there is sin. Repentance involves turning away from sin and turned to God the God of infinite grace. Its purpose is to secure forgiveness from God. And this is asserted in our gospel today when it says repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The gospel also goes on to explain how repentance can achieve forgiveness of sins. It highlights Christ's death and resurrection, his paschal mystery, as the principle, the operative mystery to make all this possible to all of us. In fact, the scriptures have already proclaimed it. In effect, this means that God has so designed it. Now you may ask, why would God bother at all, right? Sinful humankind could not save themselves from the eternal death they had landed themselves in. So God sent His only Son to save us, to save the entire nation by His death and resurrection so that we can experience new life, so that salvation can be experienced by all of us so that salvation can become a reality for us so that we can access this new life that is bestowed upon each and every one of us through Christ our Lord. But all of us, my dear friends, we need to personally accept this. Repentance is the first step towards acceptance, towards acceptance of this new life. Since all of us is for sin to sin, the gospel tells us that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations. The call to welcome Christ's salvation needs to be extended to all of us, to every people, to all generations, to all places, to all countries. It is for the same reason that in our first reading today, St. Peter, our first Pope, made the same call for repentance. Now, if you recall, the context of our first reading today is really about the story, the cure of the paralytic man, the beggar, when Peter and John cured him. So, of course, the miracle drew a huge number of people. It attracted this great excitement. A lot of people are so curious about it. Peter 
sought to explain and shared with the people then that it was Jesus. It was Jesus, the author of life, whom we have crucified, who rose from the dead, that had affected the cure. The cure was made possible because of Christ our Lord. And that the Lord had forgiven us for all the violent acts that we have committed ourselves on the grounds that that these people were so ignorant. And God had turned their violent their violence into, into a way of carrying out what he had foretold. To bring about salvation and new life and forgiveness for each and every one of us. So Peter made a strong call. Now you must return. Come back. Turn to God. So that our sins may be wiped out. Peter's miracle of the cure and call to repentance highlight the availability of the salvation and the need for us to make the personal choice, my dear friends. The cure of the paralytic by the risen Jesus pointed to the reality and the availability of salvation for each and every one of us. All of us now stand to benefit this new life, provided we personally decided to accept it, to welcome it. And the first step to accept this new life, this redemption, is to repent from our sins. And we can see this in our second reading today, John first letter. And in fact, John went a little bit further. He says that he first asserts the importance of the first step by stating that I'm writing this, right, my children, to stop you sinning. John is very concerned about humankind's tendency to sin. He undertakes to do his best to stop it. But he's also aware, he's also realistic enough to see that he may not totally be successful in doing this. So he then offers a very consoling assurance of Christ's role. He says, Christ, our advocate with the Father, meaning to say, Christ intercedes with his Father for the forgiveness of our sins. John is so certain of Christ's advocacy because of his own past experience that our Lord had proven to be the sacrifice that takes away our sins, not just our own sins, but the entire nation, the whole world. And then he went on to say, anyone who says, I know God, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar. What is the commandment of God? Love one another as I have loved you. Love is the guiding principle. Love is the way of life to those who repent and receive God's forgiveness of sins. And to this end, my dear friends, all of us, all of us are called to do our part by repenting so that we can experience forgiveness. All of us are called to love so that we can experience new life. So let us pray, my dear friends, that we may be open, open to give ourselves to the Lord who gives himself to us in this Eucharist so that we too can be the channel of God's love and mercy to all our brothers and sisters who are in need. And now let us all rise and together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the cross of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the everlasting. Amen. God our Father, we pray that our eyes and the eyes of the world be open to your infinite love as we entrust our needs to you. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and the Universal Church, that his apostolic visit to Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Timor-Leste, and Singapore may inspire us to bring the joy of the gospel to all peoples, renew and strengthen our faith, convert hearts, foster unity, and bring hope to humanity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, broken and bruised with war and violence, that it may experience the peace which Jesus alone can give. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry and thirsty, and those without clean water and food, that they receive the provisions they need without judgment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the neophytes, that they recognize the risen Lord in their midst and encounter him in their daily lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, that we ponder the word of God, so that it, so that it takes root in our hearts and bears fruit in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give us the peace which the world can neither give nor take away, and help us to bring that peace to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and, giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and William our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of his family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Yeah. 
deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other the sign of God's peace and love. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm, I'm not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my, my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen.
life of Jesus certainly is a life that is filled with mercy and compassion. Jesus comes for everyone and the reason he has come to this earth precisely is to proclaim to us the mercy and the unconditional love of God for us all. We need to follow Jesus and we need to really learn to touch them, touch the wounded. It's important for us that today we need to find opportunities to reach out to those people who are on the margin or those who feel that they are not loved, accepted by God. This is the difference from condoning sin. But we want to love the person. I think it is very important. Every person has to be loved, has to be accepted. Don't be ordinary. Be extraordinary. To use the ordinariness of their lives to be intentional in the way that we give. Each to give to his or her own, whether you are young or you are old. To know that you have been blessed, then be a blessing to others. In these last few weeks of Charities Week, we appeal for your support to fill the needs of the poor, vulnerable and marginalised. Caritas Singapore is the social mission arm of the Catholic Church, with over 20 member organisations serving over 75,000 beneficiaries annually. Your generous contributions will enable us to continue to work with our brothers and sisters in need. Pick up a Charities Week brochure or scan the QR code now. Let us be God's love in action. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the re resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. After each invocation, I ask you to respond, Amen. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Take care, my dear friends, and enjoy your weekend. Join in the dance of the earth's jubilation. This is the feast of the love of God. Shout from the heights to the ends of creation. Jesus the Savior is risen from the grave. Wake, O oh people, sleep no longer. Greet the breaking day. Christ's Redeemer, Lamb and Lion, turns the night away. of the earth's jubilation. This is the feast of the love of God. Shout from the heights to the ends of creation. Jesus the Savior is risen from the grave. All creation like a mother labors to give birth. Soon the pain will be forgotten.
Savior is risen from the grave. 